Good evening, everyone. I'm Budim Samaranayake, the president of the Business Law Society at NSBM University. And I would like to warmly welcome you all to the awareness program on cyberbullying conducted under the project Mending Minds. Business Law Society is a subject circle under the Department of Legal Studies in Faculty of Business at NSBM University, providing undergraduates, postgraduate, or anyone interested in the new numerous aspects of corporate legal sector with the vast handful of knowledge. We are currently live on our official YouTube channel, BLS NSBA, where we help our audience with legal problems when it comes to business activities and make business law interesting and easy to understand. Project Mending Minds. Through this project, we are passionate to create awareness and bring down the stigma around mental health well-being and to help empower and encourage our undergraduates to think outside the box and evolve their ways of thinking by helping them validate their own feelings and emotions. Why we initiated our project with cyberbullying? As you all know, after the COVID-19 pandemic arose, we have been restricted to virtual platforms, be it our educational, work-related or any other activities. With that, we spend more and more time on social media platforms and it came to our concern that this level of exposure has increased the cyberbullying, especially for students and undergraduates like us. But we wanted to look into this matter. So from this project, uh, Mending Minds, and we circulated a survey to get some more data about uh, Project Mending Minds. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, we got uh, 185 uh, sample audience from out of uh, 500 audience. And you might think the mm, majority has mentioned that they have not been a victim of cyberbullying, but 24.9% is not a less. Um, so as you can see, um, so now you might like, it is the valuable lives of people out there and it matters more, matters. So moving on, moving on, uh, these are the fair, uh, areas, uh, some social media platforms that has been um, used to uh, for our victims to be bullied, uh, mainly WhatsApp, uh, Facebook and Instagram. And these are the impact levels of mental well-being when it comes to uh, victims. And these are some comments that uh, our uh, responses have shared. Just because they are different, just because uh, they have been very active in so uh, lectures, uh, and some has uh, shared abusive comments on Facebook and uh, did not respond to the persons. And especially for girls, unknown people send inappropriate messages, images they were not their even followers. So these are some of the findings that we found from our conducting our survey. As you all can see, even though cyberbullying is not a commonly addressed topic, but it has come to a major problem nowadays. So today, second chapter of our project series has been graced with Man Mr. Manesh Vavita, senior attorney at law, who is going to share his knowledge about the legal aspect of cyberbullying in Sri Lankan context. When it comes to cyberbullying, it actually affects mental well-being. Thus, we have invited applied psychologist Ms. Sakuni Virasinghe. Thank you both of you for joining with us today. It's so honored to have you both here with us. Uh, I hope both of you are safe and sound. And uh, I want to start off with a general question. Um, what is cyberbullying and it, how it can be different than any other normal bullying apart from being it online? Start off with Mr. Manesh. Uh, what it is? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, actually, cyberbullying means it's bullying using electronic means by using uh, emails, social media platforms, and all the other. Uh, electronic means the why it's so common these days because it can reach to a larger audience within a very short time now all this time before the pandemic and all that we all experienced a rumor so for a rumor to go it will take time for it. for basic example if something happened in office or something happened in a 
in a university or a school, it goes from word of mouth. But now, this can reach to millions and millions of people within a few seconds. Yes. So the people use these cyberbullying to, to target one individual or group of individuals. Now it has come to where sometimes it's been used as a gender violence as well. So that is called cyberbullying, which we didn't have it earlier. I think uh, the, the psychologists will explain it to better how this can happen. It's mainly because you are at home, work from home, you study home, your life is restricted to a 10 by 10 room. So many things can happen within that 10 by 10 room. You wake up, you have no social social life at all. So people tend to find things to make, to keep them interesting. So they use this to bully people, to, to, to threaten, basically. So, and some also, some use this for take revenge in office. For example, if something happened in a Zoom meeting or a, uh, in office conference, in office meeting, that reached to the CEO or the DGs and all of them within a matter of seconds. So everyone gets to a, so that is why this is, we need to have a proper set of monitoring of cyberbullying and that's basically the basic interpretation I can give of cyberbullying. I think it's very clear. Uh, can I know from the psychological aspect, Ms. Sakuni, what is your definition of cyberbullying? And how can it be different than any other bullying? Yes, I actually agree with uh, what Mr. Manish said. You know, when it comes to cyberbullying, it is actually using um, these information and communication technologies, such as uh, social media, chat rooms, cell phone messaging, emails, and even defamatory websites, right? to actually cause harm. The intention is very clear when it comes to cyberbullying. The intention is to cause harm or to behave in an aggressive manner, right? And this actually has to happen repeatedly over time. So it's not just like a one-off incident, it happens continuously. And there is a bit of a power struggle as well because the person who is bullying is actually someone who is comparatively more powerful than the victim. That is, that is the general idea, right? So, I mean, I'm sure we can get into the depth of it as we go on, but that is the basic difference between um, you know, what cyberbullying is. It uses all these um, information technologies and uh, also the fact that whatever is shared, it's permanent. It's permanently out there. And also the audience, if you think of the audience, um, when it comes to bullying in an offline setting, right, the, the audience is limited to the onlookers. But when it comes to bullying that happens online, it can reach anyone, just not just the community here, but people all over across the globe. So I think that's, um, that's something that we need to take into consideration, especially when we discuss the harm caused by cyberbullying. Yes, exactly. And as we can see from the slide also, uh, the different main difference is that we can't see the reaction of the other one. Like even though we are not a bully, from our actions, like we don't know how the other person react to the other particular actions. So we automatically can be uh, become a bully from this kind of with the cyber situation. So, uh, Ms. Sakuni, I have a question. Like, what are the factors that affect someone to be a cyber bully? Uh, you are muted, Ms. Sakuni. I'm so sorry. Um, so, yeah, so there are so many factors that can affect um, someone to become a cyber bully. Um, one of the main factors is the idea that the bullies themselves have at some point been victims of bullying, which is why talking about cyberbullying is so important because we need to break that chain, right? So at some point in their lives, they would have gone through that power struggle, they would have been victimized, they would have felt helpless. And after a while, when they assume um, uh, a sense of power, they would want to engage in the action themselves, right? 
So that is one of the reasons. Another one is poor handling of conflicts or breakups, especially we see um, a lot of cyberbullying happen over relationship breakups, especially ones that are, there is intimate information shared with another party or private information, especially. So all of these can be disseminated to a wider audience purely because there are difficulties in managing or handling the emotions that come up with a relationship breakup or a conflict. Right? Um, some other things include like mental health con concerns such as aggression, impulsivity or substance abuse. So the, the fact that someone is um, feeling quite impulsive that can motivate them to quickly you know, pick up the phone, send out a message because it's, it's within our reach. Um, another thing is revenge, again that relates to relationships um, and sometimes it can just be loneliness or boredom. connection um, um, Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Manesh, like, what can we do if we feel like we are going to get cyberbullied? Then, cyberbullying can be in combat current in a Palavinima Badekatamai, okay, report current in a reporting can be again, then Demukapi, then Sakuni Kiwage, then relationship break up a Kakarang, Eva Gay Dekatamai, okay, very queer. निश्चित नीति आखने Cyber bullying someone, the Vinatra Tabu, India with Nan, India with Hadagane and Otta, Aperadit, Adikan Savakumsan Sabawa, take a Saga Saga, Mipotina, Mangani, a Saga Samata, Medinamuti, Panidia, Kadin, Tika Kalia Keno. Then Proxetine, Eke Hindamadamai, Sri Lanka Police, Benema Eke Yakino, Cyber Crime Unit Teka, CID. It's a good a pita put one, a salama, Rama Kanta current. Sa Tamangi area again police in a police report con, a kitina lama Kanta current secular a unit take a cut away, a Padishi police. Wait, when you cut a report can't put on, then local police can in person gila complaining at the underbulo. Lama Kanta current check, in person gila complaining at the underbulo. Operas Barrickson department to Ganan, open at Yando Nine, a Giat, Wagan, then don't a type color. Some poon seed their taker, type color than him bar than do. Him and at them, then Tiena Uganda Budima Shakarai, Egina, Sri Lanka Police, Venema Police dot LK, Kerakatino, Eka website taken a gila. Utanadina, one pate, a dakun pate, Udamatina, tell the IGP. Ethan in Gila, who had a complaint like a lotsker under Pudua, Mukad complained Vargakira. Ethan commercial, the Aparada Varada, the cyber crime, the abuse away, abuse against children, women killing him. It's a good acre of one game, 
ඕගලන්ගේ ක්වෙස්චන් ඒ කියන්නේ ඔයගෙන් තියෙන තැමිනිල්ල දාන්න පුළුවන් ඒක සිලෙක්ට් කරලා ඊට පස්සේ ඔයගලන් ඕගලන්ට තැමිනිල්ල අප්ලෝඩ් කරන්න පුළුවන් ටයිප් කරපු එක අප්ලෝඩ් කරන්න පුළුවන් කරාම ඔයගලන් ඊමේල් එකක් එනවා ඔයගලන් ඊමේල් ඇඩ්‍රස් එකට ඊමේල් එකක් එනවා digits 12ක හරි 15 විතර නම්බර් එකක් උත්තර ඒක තමයි ඔයගලන් රෙෆරන්ස් නම්බර් එක ඔයගලන් ඊට පස්සේ ඒක චෙක් කරන්න පුළුවන් දැන් අපේ රටේ තියෙන එක ගැටලුවක් තමයි ඉස්සර තිබිච්චේ ඔය වගේ දෙයක් ඉන්ටර්නෙට් එකට හරි අන්තර්ජාලයට හරි මුදා හැරියොත් ඒක කොහොමද අයින් කරන්නේ දැන් අපි ඉක්මනට කම්ප්ලයින් කරොත් ළමා කාන්තා කාර්යංශය සහ මේ CID එකේ අපරාධ පරීක්ෂණ දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවේ මේ සයිබර් ක්‍රයිම් යුනිට් එකෙන් ඉක්මනට හැකි ඉක්මනින් කටයුතු කරලා ඒගොල්ලන් මේ වීඩියෝ එක හරි පින්තුර ටික හරි අන්තර්ජාලයෙන් අයින් කරනවා එතකොට ඒක සැරිසරණ එක අඩු වෙනවා ඩැමේජ් එක වෙලන් ඩැමේජ් එක මම කියන්නේ ඒක මේව කර ගන්න බැ පාස් කරන්න හැබැයි අර ඉක්මනට අපිට අර සර්කියුලේට් වෙන එක නවත්ත ගන්න පුළුවන් මම හොඳ මුදා ආර්නේ ඔය ඒව සාමාන්‍ය දැන් ටික කාලයකට ඉස්සරහා ලංකාව ජනප්‍රිය නිලියක් ආ සම්බන්ධ වෙච්ච වීඩියෝ එකක් අන්තර්ජාලයේ සැරිසරව එයා වගේ කියලා නමුත් ඒක කම්ප්ලයින් කරපු ගමම තමයි ඒක ඉක්මනට දැන් ඕගලන් ගිහින් බලුවොත් ඒ වීඩියෝ එක නැහැ වීඩියෝ එක අයින් කරලා ඒ වගේම තමයි හිටපු ලංකාව හිටපු ටෙස්ට් නායකයෙක් සම්බන්ධ වීඩියෝ එකකුත් තිබ්බා ඒවත් ඉක්මනට ඒ කියන්නේ ඔය මම උදාහරණය ඒක මොකද දාන නමුත් සාමාන්‍යයෙන් වෙන්නේ දැන් අපිට එන නඩුවක් සම්බන්ධ වෙන විශේෂයෙන්ම ඔය රිලේෂන්ෂිප් සම්බන්ධව තමයි වැඩි හරියක් ඔය වගේ දේවල් වෙන්නේ එකම දේ තමයි ඉක්මනට රිපෝට් කරන්න මම දැන් රිපෝට් කරන එක තමයි දැන් මේක ඉන්නා ඉදිරියේ කතා කරන්න පුළුවන් ඒ මොකද යාළුවෙක් එක්ක කතා කරන එක තමයි මේක තියෙන ලොකුම දේ ඒ කියන්නේ යාළුවෙක් එක්ක කවත් එක්ක හරි කතා කරලා තමන්ට තනින් ඉන්න බැරි නම් මේක මේ මේව කරන්නේ රිපෝට් කරොත් ඉක්මනට අපිට කරන්න ඊට පස්සේ ඒ ආදාර පුද්ගල වත්තරන් ගුඩ ගන්නවා ඕට විරුද්ධව නඩු දාන්න පුළුවන් මහසත අධිකරණයේ සහ නීතිපති දැන් මේක වෙනම ටාස්ක් ෆෝස් එකකුත් හදලා තියෙනවා නීතිපති දෙපාර්තමේන්තුව පොලිසිය ළමා කාන්තා කාර්යංශය එකතු වෙලා ඉක්මනට මේ වගේ දේවල් සම්බන්ධයෙන් කටයුතු කරන්න නීතිම අර ප්‍රශ්න තියෙන්නේ हदसी क्राइम में कटा महत्वना की वो विधि टापू में आकर आप लोग नेता में दूर खाता नहीं में तुम वाले टा आप इटा जनवत करा ला आपे इन्क्वायरीज दम यम कराने पड़ोगा महिताने मुखाद्दे हेतु मिनिस्सु के ने गुड़ाक विक्टिम में काक ए इन्क्वायरी का नोदान हेतु मुखाद्दे मिसाक कोई पर इतने गुड़ाक की टा उपदेशमुखी සහ අපි වෙන විශේෂම පොඩි දරුවෙක් නම් අම්මත් එක්ක හරි තාත්තත් එක්ක හරි කතා කරොත් ඒ දෙල්ල සමහර විට ඉන්ටර්නෙට් එක මම අයින් කරලා දාලා දෙන්න නැත්නම් මගේ මොබයිල් ඩිවයිස් එක මාත් මගෙ අයින් කරා අද අනේ ඒ වගේ බය ඇති වෙන්න පුළුවන් සහ දැන් විශේෂයෙන්ම අපි දැක්කොත් එහෙම කෙනෙකුට මේ වගේ දෙයක් කියද්දී ඒගොල්ලෝ දෙන ප්‍රතිචාරය ගැන අපි නිතරම හිතනවා කොහොමද මෙහෙම දෙයක් මම කිව්වොත් එහෙම මෙයා මොන වගේ දෙයක් මට කියයිද Like, let's we'll talk about relationships right since that has become the common theme here so common theme is really, that yeah yeah so if in a relationship now you're sending private information to another person the person who's in the relationship and once the relationship ends the other person is threatening to expose these um you know bits and pieces of information so if you do share that with a friend the immediate thought could be okay what if she criticizes what if he criticizes me for sending that in the first place you know ayo ame me yawe ayo ame widihata message ekak danna ayo ame thoru thoru e put kala dunna kiyala ahai kiyala baya athi yana kala and it's also very overwhelming right i need to go to an authority and report that can be very overwhelming as well 
so these factors the fact that you may be the criticized or judged for sharing that information and even the mere fact that okay, if it's a peer and they will take away my um, internet or phone privileges those are very real fears that people have that these children teenagers young adults you know right everyone has these fears so it's important to if we are to tackle this issue we are to make sure that they are understood and do not blame the victim right to stop victim blaming um you know why did you do this it doesn't help the person anymore right it only adds to the burden that they're carrying right so the first thing to do is to genuinely listen to the person genuinely listen to the victim what are you going through what are you experiencing what are you feeling right now so let's talk about it so be very open and listen i think that's that's one of the that's one of the best advice you could give to a person yes thank you so much for sharing those advice um so sometimes actually the situation is not targeting to bully someone so how exactly can we differentiate and evaluate if a person is just joking or cyber bully uh, mr manesh mahitna obata ekata uttara denna puluwan kiyala o gara thina lassana singala kada extra thu wenne vihilu kiyala vihiluwa vihiluwa kotanida nawathanne kiyana eka balana eka ne e vihiluwa karana ekena मूलिक හරි නීතියක් නැහැ මේක සයිබර් බුලි මේක සයිබර් බුලි නේ බ්ලැක් ඇන්ඩ් වයිට් එකක් නැහැ අපිට තියෙන්නේ දැන් නීතිය නීතිය මොකද මේක අලුත් දෙයක් මේ ලොක් ඩවුන් එකෙන් පස්සේ ආපු අලුත්ම නීතිය අලුත්ම තත්යක් තමයි මේක මොකද අපි ලංකාවේ අහලා තිබුණේ නැහැ සයිබර් බුලි කියලා මම හිතන්නේ මේ ලොක් ඩවුන් එක ඔන්ලයින් ක්‍රිස්මස් පටන් ගන්න ගන්න අපි දන්නෙත් නැහැ සයිබර් බුලි කියන්නේ මොකද බුලින් අහලා තියෙනවා මොකද බුලින් කියලා එකක් ලංකාවේ ලොකුවට තිබුණ නැහැ විදේශ රටවල නම් තියෙනවා ලංකාවේ තිබුණ ලංකා නොතිබුණ අනේමේ තිබුණ හැබැයි ලොකුවට එලියට ආවේ නැහැ ඒක ප්‍රශ්නේ උනේ ඒක ප්‍රශ්නේ උනේ 2002 දී අපේ තිබ්බ ඉස්සර ඩෙෆමේෂන් ඒ කියන්නේ අපහාස කිරීමේ නීතිය ඒකට අපරාධ වරදක් එක තමයි තිබ්බේ නමුත් 2002 දී ඒක අයින් කරා මොකද ඒක යූස් කරන්න පටන් ගත්තා දේශපාලන වශයෙන් ඒ කියන්නේ දේශපාලන ප්‍රතිවිරුද්ධ අයව ට විරුද්ධව ක්‍රිටිසයිස් කරන එක ආණ්ඩුව ක්‍රිටිසයිස් කරන එක නවත්තන්න පටන් ගත්තා ඒක දාල मेकटा नीतिया So, Miss Kasuni, uh, what do you think? Like, what is your uh, perspective when it comes to making jobs and uh, going off the limit? Right. So, well, you know, there people do say, you know, it's just a joke. You know, don't take it so seriously. Don't consider it, you know, like a big thing. But the fact is, if you feel hurt, right? If you feel hurt and you feel like others are laughing at you rather than with you. then it's no longer a joke that, that's where it ends right and especially if you communicate to the person you know i'm feeling really hurt by what you're saying and this is really affecting me but they still continue to engage in those same actions that provoke that that bring out that hurt then that's you know let's call it what it is you know it is it is bullying and if if it happens through cyberspace then that is cyberbullying 
So I think it's important to consider like follow the gut feeling, right? If you're feeling hurt, then that's a really good um, idea that, okay, this is, this is cyberbullying. Cyber it is also important that we help these individuals who are engaged in bullying to help them come out of it, right? To help them to stop that behavior, to see the consequences of that behavior. You can, you know, gently ask them, you know, what's going on? I have noticed this, you're essentially noticing certain signs in them, right? And that's why you're approaching. So you can say, I, I noticed these things in you. And you know what, what are the consequences? What will happen, you know, to this other person that you're um, in, engaging in this behavior with? Um, and if you look back 10 years from now, if you look back at yourself and the actions that you're doing right now, would you be happy? So those are questions you can ask very gently, right? Not to blame the person, but very gently to ask these questions to evoke some sort of insight in them that, okay, this might not be the best way. There might be other ways I can, you know, connect with people or I can feel a sense of power. There are other ways, non-harmful ways. So that is, that is the main thing, first to educate and also help them see the consequences of their actions. Yes. So I think even though it's a joke or whatever it is, we have to be careful as when we are uh, working with the cyber area because we don't know what's the consequences of our actions. So I think we have to be very concerned when it comes to taking any actions. So um, how can a victim overcome cyberbullying? So I think especially Ms. Sakuni can answer that. Uh, I think first of all, uh, as uh, Mr. Vevita explained, um, um, uh, it's especially that the first thing we have to do is the put the complaint. If you are being uh, abused by the cyberbullying uh, situation, the first thing that you have to do is put up a complaint. Next, the mental uh, injury. How can we uh, cure that, Ms. Sakuni? Right. So as uh, Mr. Bevita correctly pointed out, it's very important to put the complaint, right? And, you know, sometimes it's difficult for the victim herself or himself to, you know, stand up and make the complaint formally. So it's okay to seek help, you know, seek support from another person. It could be a family member, it could be a very trustworthy friend, talk to someone and help them. Um, and get their help actually to report to the authorities and it's important to have the evidence right uh, say for example if you're getting um, various messages you know harassing messages or threatening messages it's important to have like evidence to show as um, as you report to the authorities so make sure you gather all the evidence and um, also like in terms of healing the injury you know healing the emotional distress um, it's it's best to talk to a professional um, because there is counseling for that to help manage the emotional distress but um, also it's important you know little things that they can do one thing is to remind themselves that the actions of the bully are a reflection of the bully himself or herself rather than of you. You know, it's nothing that you have done or usually we tend to blame ourselves or feel guilty that, okay, I might have done something to them and that's why this is happening. But yes. in most cases, you see that this is not the case. You know, it's, it's not like you have done anything, but it's just that this behavior keeps happening to you. So in that sense, it's important to know that it's a reflection of them rather than of you. And also know that you are worthy as a person, right? No one else can tell you how worthy you are except for yourself. So make sure that you keep reminding yourself that, okay, I am worthy because, because you're a human, right? From the foundation itself, let's think of that. Because you're a human, you're worthy. Right. And also it's important to remind yourself of all your strengths and potential, because when you're going through something as distressing as being the victim of cyberbullying, you can feel trapped. You can feel a sense of helplessness. So and you feel like, OK, I'm, I'm not strong enough because this person has such power over me. So in that sense, it helps to remind yourself that, OK, I have these these strengths. 
right? And I have so much potential. There is still hope for the future for me. So there are things that I can do to get there, to get to that point in future where I achieve my goals and you know live out my life, um, along with the support of those who are around me, right? That could be family and close friends and even a professional, as I mentioned. So yeah, those are little reminders, but also like to to help with the emotional distress. It really helps to you know talk to a professional and. If not a professional, then maybe a very close friend and family be truly um, open and um, and talk about all that you're feeling. So yeah, those those. I think that's be- a great advice, and uh, we we can share some of the uh, professional uh, psychotherapist numbers and the places that you can seek help. Uh, these are really good places that you can. Uh, get into if you one of your friend is being a victim of cyberbullying if you see you can uh, take down these uh, contacts because it's be really important and we will uh, surely put them in the description after the live sharing part so um when it comes to uh, so mr Vevita, what are the some of the worst cases of cyberbullying in your opinion like you are being the uh a lawyer and like what kind of cases you have gotten this far uh, when it comes to cyberbullying? The the worst part is you can get depression. The the victim will because as you very well aware the legal filing even filing a legal action will consume time. Very honest. So the whether the person who is who is a victim, whether he'll get the correct or the justice, it's a question. The culprit will get punished for sure. But the question is, after so much, so so uh, after such a long time, whether there will be any effect, whether that sentencing or the punishment given to the victim will carry any, any, any justice to the victim. Yes. Uh, right? So I think we are... Uh, Sakuni will will explain it to you. I think we'll give a better view than me because how people go to depression, it's it, it's a, it, because it, sometimes they go into different extremes. They start bullying others as well just to overcome their overcome their uh, depression. They might even commit suicide. In foreign countries, we have luckily we have not. I told you we haven't had uh, have such situation. But there are, but there, there was incident uh, last week where the boy, I think a young, young, young boy was committed suicide because the fathers refused to give the uh, give the phone to play a game, online game. So th- th- this this is just a one incident, nothing to do, nothing related to cyber. But these things can happen because as I very uh, as I told you earlier, your life will. Most because of the pandemic, your life is only limited to a 10 by 10 room with no social uh, gathering, no social attraction. You will you, will, you will find to try to find solution within yourself. So many things come into your your mind when you, when you're alone. The mind play a very different uh, ball game when it comes to uh, when you're alone. So you mm. sometimes you take shortcuts. Shortcut is to take your life or to or you become a bully, which will be another menace. If you look back at it, it's causes maybe a small remark made by a friend on the internet where the message has gone to the entire WhatsApp uh, WhatsApp community. You have if you're a school or a, a, a university or where you have about more than 500, 600 people on one WhatsApp group. So if a one small comment can go a long way and she or he will not be able to walk into the university again or the school or maybe yeah. the office. So these things, we have seen it, but un- uh, we, we have nothing, uh, we haven't had any reporting of such uh, uh, violence, but people hit depression, they become bullies just to overcome it and make wrong decisions just because they are depressed and they are they are helpless. Because most of them, as very correctly earlier pointed out, you can reach to a friend, but the friend will question him or her. Why yeah. did you do that? Why did you let that boy or a girl record record these things? Uh, that 
I we got a matter uh, last week or two weeks ago where the husband has taken pictures while they were married and was released those pictures to internet. So we well, the good thing was she was quick. She quickly as soon as the things she knew going to go uh, uh, out of hand, she came and met uh, us. So we did what we needed to be done. So, uh, brought the husband to the uh, uh, CID and got the matter sorted out. But he had the material with him. Uh, so it had gone, it will go because sometimes even even in marriage also, they can use this to bargain, to threaten. Said, if you don't do this, all these pictures will go online. If you don't do this in office, I will post this message. CEO to GM to everyone will get to know about your promotion will go to six. Due to the pandemic, you need money. Your job security is become at high risk now. So people yes. use this as a bargaining the, the chip as well to get their benefits to to get things done. So it's a it's a it's a one with the power who uses to. Uh, against the less powered person. Mainly, yes, if you look at the history, it's the gender, it's, it's become slowly but surely like a gender violence uh, thing now, cyberbullying. Exactly. exactly. The most of the victims are a female uh, category. And uh, yeah, and I like the fact that Mr. Manish mentioned like even though the results are depression or maybe suicide and we won't exactly see this is because of cyberbullying but maybe it has started from uh, just a small cyberbullying incident so i think that's a great point um, so yeah i think that is the reason why it is not obvious for uh, the people that cyberbullying is uh, not a major issue because we see it's just suicide it's just a uh, love affair, but it's the mainly the base was the cyberbullying incident. So, Miss Sakuni, so um, what can we do if we feel like a friend of ours is being cyberbullied but isn't disclosing it because they are afraid? Like, uh, I think Mr. Manesh also can uh, answer that question. Like, what if they are not in like revealing, but we can see that they are being bullied? Let's say a WhatsApp group, one of our members. Uh, undergraduate is being bullied in a WhatsApp group in the hall, uh, maybe 300 to 500 students in a WhatsApp group. And what can we do in a such incident? We can't betray our batch group. We can't uh, like open it for the students because that student will get exposed. So what can we do in such a uh, situation? What we can do is if I do not believe in this uh, uh, open group. If you think that this comment or this pose is against someone, one of your friends, if you are a responsible friend or if you are being a true friend, you should be able to stop it at that time. You should tell that person who posted it, remove it. This is not good. I have seen that happening in many groups that I, I, I in. School, it's, if you're in a school group, very, it's a very general thing. You have the fights and the discussion that will happen about 20 years ago, 10 years ago, still coming up. So that's also some that's also falling into bullying as because you just openly criticize someone else in in a social media platform. So if you are the other friend, if you are the friend and it is your colleague or the friend who's getting bullied by uh, someone else, five powered one or of your same uh, same uh, caliber, you should. Being as a responsible person, you should say, no, this is not good. This is not correct. You should not bring this. And if you do this, we have to take a, we have to take, uh, we have to take action. But if you can't say, we have to say action, but at least try to stop it in the social media platform. Then you have the, you can call 119 if you feel like it's a, it's going beyond that. If it's just not just a joke that was made uh, there on the internet, yeah, or on the WhatsApp. If it's, if it's beyond something beyond that, you should have the courage to inform the authorities. If it's just a maybe a, a picture or something with uh, with uh, about a relationship they had with 
with someone in the same group for a university loop or something like that, then you should have a, you should have the courage to lodge a complaint. Another thing, with regard to law, you can be charged for having possession of having obscene pictures and videos as well. So you, if you prop, if you correctly lodge a complaint, then that person who has that material with him, pornographic uh, video of of a of a person of someone else who is in that loop, can be charged as well. That is, he can be charged for. Uh, 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 criminal uh, intimidation that is under penal code as he can be charged for, uh, for sexual molest that is under section 345 as well as you can be charged for having pornography materials in with you. If it's become to a sexual uh, 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 if the bullying is regard to related to a sexual part but if not then you have to lodge a complaint uh, you can file under section uh, 486 for uh, threatening and uh, intimidation. Thank I hope you for I gave sharing you. those. Yes, of course. And Ms. Sakuni, why do you think like um, this kind of situation happens in the first place? Like, uh, how can you build up your confidence to uh, stand against cyberbullying and to stop these things happening around your friends and families? Right. So I think the first thing is intervention, you know, speaking up and educating, not just not just being um, being compassionate towards the victim, but also making sure that they are heard. Right. Making sure that you listen to them and be open, be empathetic towards what they're going through, because you cannot gauge the amount of emotional distress. Right. Yeah. There is no parameter for it. So they can be in serious pain. So you need to be very understanding, very compassionate and make sure that they're heard, first of all. And also make sure that you educate your community. So programs like this, I think, are absolutely wonderful. You know, we are you are taking a step um, towards educating the general public over what really is affecting um, the population right now, the society right now, especially the young, uh, especially the youth. Right, so it's very important that you help educate the community and make sure that you intervene, right? Because there are, as I mentioned before, the victims of cyberbullying might find it difficult to open up just immediately, right? We can't sort of go around expecting them to immediately talk about it. It takes time, it takes time to process what they're going through, like this is really happening. So, you know, it helps to have a friend who understands, who can compassionately listen and also help them, you know, empower them to, you know, do the reporting and, you know, support them to go to the authorities. So you need that sort of support. So make sure you are that friend. Make sure you are that supportive, compassionate friend. And even if it happens in a group, I know that's a very valid concern you had previously, you know, what about, um, you know, other people seeing it, other people seeing you calling out uh, this person for bullying. Um, if that's the case, then reach out privately, but make sure you do it at the very moment it happens, because the more time you that elapses, okay. or yeah. the more time that spends you dismissing it or saying it's fine, it's fine, whatever, maybe next time he or she will not do it, the more escalates right so you want to stop it at the very very start so as as mr manish pointed out be that friend right be that compassionate understanding supportive friend and also make sure you educate the community around you and miss sakuni like let's say in sri lankan context therapy and going to therapy is not actually a thing in sri lanka but you being a therapist have you seen a growth in people coming to therapy and solving their problems nowadays than before? Absolutely, absolutely. I think um, even though it's kind of new to um, Sri Lanka, um, the fact that there have been counseling going on for decades now, but more or less it hasn't been accessible by a lot of people. But now we have lots of counselors and lots of therapists and there is increased accessibility comparatively, right? So in that sense, yes, there are people coming to therapy. There is still stigma, but 
that is why it's important that we talk about it we talk about going to therapy make it okay to go to therapy make it okay to seek help because in the same way that you go to uh, a physician to consult for a physical uh, concern that you have it does not have to be a major major illness but even for minor uh, concerns that you have that you're worried about you go to the doctor you go to the physician right so in the same way when you are experiencing emotional distress when you're going through emotional pain it is possible to go to a counselor go to a psychologist and seek help because it's you know you're taking care of yourself that is one way to take care of your yourself so as actually manish uh, sir mentioned even though you uh, point out that if you uh, put a complaint about this uh, cyberbullying situation it's it just like a revenge you take but uh, just for the action that you took but it won't actually heal yourself so it's also important to heal yourself go to a therapy talk talk it out and uh, release that uh, crush in your side and um, i would like to uh, give our audience a chance to ask away some question uh, our pr uh, executive thai uh, ravindran would you like to ask a question Uh, excuse me, sir. So this is uh, this is a question for you, uh, sir. Uh, do you think there are sufficient laws regarding cyberbullying, or is it still an area that isn't covered by any laws yet? Uh, as I pointed out earlier, we don't have a black and white law saying that this is cyber cyberbullying. It's in discussion. As I said, it's something very new to Sri Lanka. All we can with the lockdown and with the work from home and all that concept. So. laws will come it will take time because it has to go through a process it has to go through it has to be drafted properly then the wording can you you just can't draft a law saying this is cyberbullying this is not you need you need to look to research with other countries what us and england and all the other countries have done so that need to be done but we have laws to tackle it which the problem is most of the time what we get, what we see is threatening someone with uh, using the private information like most of the time what what comes to us is what get reported is with regard to revealing of things that happen in a relationship things that happen uh, during marriages and all that so we have laws to combat that section 483 of the criminal procedure that's regarding threatening you threaten someone with a material that you have i will upload this on internet if you decide to leave me if you decide to let go of me this will be on the next day this will be on internet and you 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 and you that become a bully we have three uh, if it's during a relationship then you can be charged with section 345 so molestation and also you can be charged for having pornography materials under the obscene uh, act uh, obscene audience so we have laws to com- combat this but we don't have specific black and white laws saying this is cyberbullying this is not for example as i said small joke you are gay send the message reach to all the people in your university then everyone become started laughing at you that is bullying that is bullying completely you just make a uh, comment on someone else who you want to get get back at for example that can happen i mean that will have that will most likely be happening right now which this is not doesn't get report that if you are doing very well in studies or sports small comment can bring that person completely down we have seen it happening to many uh, school children because as i earlier called uh, inform that small one the 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 bullying message can reach to millions and millions people in such short time earlier it was just a word of mouth will take time maybe a month or two or three or four to reach the university but now within one one message it's reached we have laws enough laws to can combat it 
but regard to these kind of incident there is a big question mark laws will come but it will take time because we have never seen such thing like this earlier uh, until the lockdown came exactly yeah. thank you sir i think uh, the question the answer is really, really clear um i would like to ask ms sakun is there anything that you want to share because we have come to the end of the session is there anything that you want to share more that we couldn't cover up through the session thank you i think uh, we covered up um more stuff uh, you know what we wanted to capture with this uh, session in terms of cyber bullying and the consequences i think um, the message that i personally would want to give out is that be compassionate right you never know what someone is going through so make sure that you're compassionate make sure that you when you do talk to someone make sure that you're actually listening to understand the person and it could be the cyber person who's engaged in bullying or it could be the victim of bullying but make sure when you talk to them you are listening to understand not just to fix the problem right so yeah thank you for a wonderful session actually yes i have a very one small question so uh, through the session i understand that it's still a very closed area in sri lanka cyber bullying so as a subject circle who is very concerned about this kind of situation what we can do to make more awareness and to have a effective um, program from the cyber bullying like how can we make it uh, impactful for the students and undergraduate do you have any uh, suggestions that we can implement yeah i think um, the mere fact that this is being shared on youtube you know and being shared to a widespread audience that's a main that's a very important thing because it's not just to a limited crowd but rather to um, lots of people so you want to make sure that your message reaches as many people as it possibly could so it's a great initiative and i'm really appreciative that you took the stand you know you're speaking up um for these people so it's it's uh, it's a wonderful thing and as the youth as um as you know really what's really affecting you it's time to start um, you know educating the community the community of adults um especially on what is happening in our lives and what are the things that are impacting our lives and what are the things that um what needs to be worked on so that we can not only get um, the message across but get their support as well right um get their support to spread the message uh, to that population as well so yeah thank you so much for the compliment uh, mr manish oba mokad hitanne api monage devalda subject circle ekak vidhira karanno ne me wage sai bulli kene katram gatu ek serious issue ekak api society ke den tiyana me visheshayenma me online situation insa api monawa प्रोग्राम कर වෙන්නේ මේකෙන් මිනිස්සු දැනගන්න දැන් අපි අර මද්‍රාස සම්බන්ධයෙන් ඕන තරම් awareness program තියෙනවා. ඒ කියන්නේ ළමන්ට අපරාධ child abuse සම්බන්ධයෙන් ඕන තරම් programs කරනවා. නමුත් මේ වගේ cyber bullying සම්බන්ධයෙන් programs කරනවා එහෙනම් අඩුයි. ඇත්තම තත්. මොකද මේ දන්නේ නැහැ මිනිස්සු ඒ කියන්නේ සාමාන්‍ය ජනතාව දන්නේ නැහැ මොකද්ද මේකෙන් මෙහෙම එකක් වුණත් අපි කරන්නේ. මොකද ඒගොල්ලන් අහලත් නැහැ. ඉතින් ඊටමත් පොඩි ප්‍රතිශතයක් තමයි දන්නේ මේක ගන්න නීති මෙතක් ඉතින් හැකි තරම් මේ වගේ awareness program කරලා විශේෂයෙන්ම තියෙන දෙයක් තමයි complaint එකක් දාලා ඒ අර culprit උසාව වෙට ගෙනල්ලා එතනින් යහට මේක නවතින්න බෑ මේක අනිවාර්යයෙන් ඒ victim ගේ mentality එක හදන්න ඕන. ඒක ඒකේ දුක තේරෙන්නේ ඒක වෙන දේ child abuse හරි ඒ වගේ එකකට වඩා මම හිතන්නේ mentally සැප කරනවා සෑහෙන්ට මේකලා මොකද මේකලා දැන් අපි child abuse එකක් මම කියන්නේ ඒක සාමාන්‍ය කරන කරන්න දැනුවා නෙමෙයි නමුත් ඊට වැඩිය මෙන්ටලි ට්‍රෝම එකක් තියෙනවා මේක මොකද මේක හැමදාම තියෙනවා මේ නිවුස් මේක ෆෝන් එකක 
ලැප්ටොප් එක තියාගත්ත මේ 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 මේක හැමදාම තියෙනවා මේක තව අවුරුදු 20කට ගිහිල්ලා දෙලේට එන්න පුළුවන් අවුරුදු 40කට ගිහිල්ලා දෙලේට එන්න පුළුවන් ඉතින් ඒක හින්දා මේ වගේ ප්‍රෝග්‍රෑම් කරලා මේ මිනිසුන් දැනුවත් කරලා යූත් එක විශේෂයෙන් මේකින් වැඩිහෙම්ම වැඩිහෙම්ම මේක මේක විශේෂයෙන් අවුරුදු 30ට 30ට වැඩි 30 පාර වැඩි කට්ටියට යූස් කරන හැන අඩුයි හැබැයි මේක වැඩි හරියක්ම ටාගට් වෙන්න යූත් එක සහ ස්කෝල් ළමයි ඒගොල්ලන් ඉතින් ඒගොල්ලන් ඒගොල්ලන් ආරක්ෂා කරන්න ඕනේ මොකද මේක තමයි අනාගතේ ඉන්ටර්නෙට් ඔන්ලයින් ප්ලට්ෆෝම් එක ඒකේ හරි අපි බලලා මේ වගේ කවුන්සලින් ප්‍රෝග්‍රෑම්ස් මේ වගේ කරලා රීච් කරලා මොකද ඒක තමයි මූලිකම දේ ඒ වගේ එකක් වුණොත් කොහොම මොනවද කරන්නේ නීතිමය තත්ත්වෙත් පාරදා දීලා දැඩි මම කියන්නේ ඉක්මන්ට දැඩි නීති ගෙනල්ලා ඒක ඉක්මන ඉවර වෙන විදිහට ප්‍රයෝරිටි ඒ නඩු වලට දැන් අප දූෂණ සම්බන්ධ නම් ඉක්මන ප්‍රයෝරිටි එකක් දෙනවා ඒ ළමයාගේ තත්ත්වය බලන්න නැත්නම් මෙතන දූෂණ වෙලා අවුරුදු 8කට පස්සේ ආ ඒ ළමයා සාක්කි දෙන්න පටන් ගද්දි වැඩක් නැහැ කතාව ඕක තමයි දැන් ඒ කියන්නේ ලෝ ඩිලේ will going to make that uh, uh, person suffer an injustice to that person eka navathala ikmanin kriya margaya karagena karanda kadudu karanna visheshayama ogulang wage youth eka me wage karana eka loku deyak mokada meka me wa karanda 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 you dai meka youtube eka yana wageema meka social media ani platforms eka dai thora minissu igena ganna den law student gen ek nan eka ganna dana ganna puluwa neethiya sambandha namuth anik ayata idamath අතවශ්‍ය මේක දින බරපතල ගාම නීතිමය තත්ත්වය සහ මේක වුණොත් කවුන්සලින් පාට් එක තියෙනවා කියන එක උදව්ව අපිට මේක වුණොත් අපිට සහනයක් තියෙනවා කියන දේ දැනගන්න අවේනස් ප්‍රෝග්‍රෑම් එක කරන එක තමයි මම හිතන්නේ මූලික වෙද්දී ඉතින් මම හිතන්නේ හොඳ දෙයක් තවත් මේ වගේ වැඩසටහන් ඉදිරියටත් කරන්න කියලා තමයි මම යෝජනා කරන්නේ බොහොම ස්තුතියි සර් api danuna tu velawat awasan wela tiyena so first of all i would like to thank our valuable speakers and for sharing their knowledge with this uh, today and i would like to mention our vice chancellor ea virasinghe deputy vice chancellor chamind ratnayak head academic development and quality assurance bartha dorakotwa dean of the faculty in business ms tilini disilva and our lecturer in charge Uh, of BLS Miss Jaini Pereira for supporting us for this project and making it happen. We can't do this without a good team, so I would like to thank my awesome team for working day and night to make this program success. This is just a second chapter of the cyberbully and uh, the consequences behind it. And from the project mending minds, we are trying to make more projects to make this uh, cyberbully and other uh, programs awareness programs in the future. So for today thank you so much before you take an action uh think about it think about the other person be kind enough and we say hashtag #bodies not 